Welcome to the last section of Chapter 4, which is Section 7, Use Isosceles and Equilateral Triangles. Our objective, as you can probably guess, is to use properties of isosceles and equilateral triangles to calculate missing side and angle measures. You will be happy to know that this section is a lot more what you think of as math or algebra, where you're going to be setting up an equation and solving it, and less proofs than the, pe the previous sections have been. We're going to start out with a quick review. The review, what is an isosceles triangle? Hopefully you remember that means that the triangle has two congruent sides. So here would be an isosceles triangle. An equilateral triangle has all three sides congruent. So that would be something like this. So the first theorem that we're going to learn is if two sides of a, a triangle are congruent, so if it's isosceles, then the base angles are congruent. So let's draw ourselves a bigger figure here. Okay, so these sides that are congruent, those are called the legs. The side that's not congruent is called the base. Okay, so if my legs are congruent, the base angles are congruent. So that means these two angles right here. The way you figure these angles out is they're the angles that are located across from my two legs. Okay, so if I have two legs that are congruent, the angles across from the legs are also going to be congruent. So let's look at example number one. It says, complete the statements below using the diagram. So the first statement is HG is congruent to HK. So HG is congruent to HK. That tells me that I'm looking at this triangle on the left. If I have two sides congruent, that means the base angles are congruent. The angles across from the legs. So I would know that angle HGK is congruent to angle HKG. Now I'm going to erase that for the next one. For the next one, I know that angle KHJ, so KHJ, this one right here, is congruent to angle KJH, this one right here. That tells me that I'm looking at this triangle on the right. If I have two angles congruent, that means the legs are congruent. So the sides across from those are congruent. So that would tell me also that HK is congruent to KJ. So this is the idea with isosceles triangles. That leads us to the idea of equilateral triangles. And this is something we've talked about in class before. But if a triangle is equilateral, it's also equiangular. So we're going to be using these, these ideas of isosceles triangles with these angles and legs congruent and equilateral slash equiangular triangles. We're going to be using that to find missing side and angle measures. So let's look at example two. Example two says find the angle measures of equilateral triangle PHS. Anytime I have a problem like this, I always have to draw a figure. So I'm going to start by drawing my triangle PHS. It's equilateral, so all my sides are congruent. Now, by the corollary that we just wrote down, we know that all of the angles are congruent as well. I have to find these angle measures. Well, I don't know these angles, so I'm going to mark angle P as X. Now, if all my angles are congruent, if P is X, H is also going to be X, and S is going to be X. Now, thinking back, I know that the angles of a triangle are going to sum to 180. So I have x plus x plus x equals 180. This simplifies to 3x equals 180. If I divide by 3, I get x equals 60 degrees. So this is true of every equilateral triangle. Every equilateral triangle is equiangular. So every equilateral triangle, the angles are all 60 degrees. So let's use these ideas of isosceles and equilateral triangles to do a few more examples on the next page. Okay, looking at example number three, it says find the value of x in the figure below. So you're going to notice that we have an isosceles triangle. I have the two base angles that are congruent. 
Now, those two angles are on the base. 18, then, is the base. The sides across from these angles are going to be congruent. So this side across from my first angle will be congruent to this side across from my other angle. So I get 3x plus 9 equals 24. If I subtract 9, I get 3x equals 15. Dividing by 3, you get x equals 5. And that's it. Now these problems are not too bad as long as you do some thinking. You really have to think which are the angles and which are the sides that are congruent. Don't just sit there and randomly choose sides and set them equal. You have to think, what are my legs and what is my base? Which is my side that's not congruent? Okay, let's look at example four. In example four, I'm going to notice I have two triangles. The triangle on the left and the triangle on the right. The triangle on the left is isosceles. It has these two sides that are congruent. The triangle on the right is equilateral. It has all three pairs of sides congruent. I'm going to start with the triangle on the right, my equilateral triangle. I know that all of the angles are congruent, so I'm going to mark all of my angles x. Now I know that they're going to sum to 180, so I have 3x equals 180 and x equals 60. Okay, that was helpful. I know, now know that all of these angles are 60 degrees. I don't know how to find y right off the bat, so I'm just going to write down more that I know. If this angle is 90 and I have that big part is 60, that means this little part is 30. Now, I'm going to notice on my isosceles triangle, this is the base. So if I have one base angle of 30, this one is also 30. And I know that the triangle sums to 180 again. So I have 30 plus 30 plus y equals 180. This gives me 60 plus y equals 180, and y equals 120. If I went too fast for you, please make sure that you rewind and re-watch re that problem. Let's move on to example five. Example 5, we have a whole bunch of different triangles, and you need to find all of the measures. I'm going to start by helping you find angle 3. I know that angle 3 and 105 are going to be supplementary. So angle 3 is going to be 180 minus 105, which is 75. So angle 3 is 75 degrees. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so that I can write more on this. Okay, I'm going to help you with one more. Next, I'm going to help you with angle 8. I know that angle 8 and the 42 are vertical, so angle 8 is going to be 42 degrees. Right now, I would like you to pause the video and find the remaining angles on your own. When you are finished, come back and I will go over the, the problem with you. Okay, let's see how you did. Starting with the left triangle. My left triangle is isosceles, so my angles across from the legs are congruent. So angles 1 and 3 are congruent, so angle 1 you should have gotten to be 75 degrees. Now, if the angle sums to 180, that means that angle 2 is going to be 30 degrees. 3 and 4 are vertical, so that means that angle 4 is also 75 degrees. Now here you may have gotten a little stuck. Let's move to this triangle on the right. I know that the triangle sums to 180. So if I take 180 and I subtract 90 and I subtract 42, I get angle 7 to be 48 degrees. That means that angle 6 is 48 degrees because they are vertical angles. Angle 5 then is going to be 180 minus 75 minus 48, which is 57 degrees. Hopefully you got all those right. 
If you made a small mistake that somewhere, that probably messed up the rest of your angles, so don't sweat it too much. You're going to have time to practice with this tomorrow. We have a few more examples on the next page that we're going to do together, and then you are going to be done. So please flip the page. For example number six, you were asked to find the perimeter for each of the following. Right now, I would like you to try this example. Pause the video, find X, and then find the perimeter. Good luck. Okay, let's see how we did. You should have noticed that this is an isosceles triangle. That means the sides across from my angles are going to be congruent. So you should have had 2x minus 1 equals x plus 4. This gives you x equals 5. That was not the question though, the question was find the perimeter. When you substitute in 5, you get this side to be 9, that side to be 9, which means the perimeter is 25 feet. Remember to find perimeter, you add up all the sides. So I added up 9, 9, and 7, which is 25. Hopefully you got that right. Now we're going to do the second example in number six together. This one is an equilateral triangle. So in this case, I know all of my sides are congruent. In the previous example, you knew you had two congruent sides, so you set them equal. This time I have three congruent sides, so which ones do I set equal? Well, it actually doesn't matter. If all your sides are congruent, just pick two of them. So I'm going to pick x plus 13 equals 3x minus 1. In this case, I get 14 equals 2x, and x equals 7. Now, I should have gotten x equals 7 no matter which two sides I pick. So I could have done 6x minus 22 equals 3x minus 1. In this case, I get 3x equals 21, and x equals 7 again. And that's not a coincidence. That's what should happen. No matter which two sides I pick, I should get, sides of, I should get x to be 7. Now I need to substitute back in. Substituting in... I get this side to be 20, I get this side to be 20, and I get that side to be 20, which again is what should be the case. This is an equilateral triangle, so all the sides should be congruent. Here when I add up my three sides of 20, I get the perimeter to be 60 feet. Okay, you all have one more to try on your own. I would like you to try example 7, please. Right now, pause the video, find x and y in example 7, and come back when you are finished, please. Okay, let's see how we did. You should have noticed that example 7 is an isosceles triangle. If I have two legs that are congruent, their angles are also going to be congruent. So you get 3x minus 11 equals 2x plus 11. This gives you x equals 22. Now the issue is, how do I find y from here? Well, let's substitute that 22 in and see where it takes us. 3 times 22 is 66, minus 11 is going to give me 55, so this angle is 55 and that angle is 55. Well, now I know that the triangle sums to 180, so I have 55 plus 55 plus 2y equals 180, so 110 plus 2y equals 180. If you subtract 110, this gives you 2y equals 70 and y equals 35. Hope you got that right. If you did, great job. If not, good for you. You have one more problem to help you um, regain your confidence. So today's video, we learned properties of isosceles and equilateral triangles, and we used them to find missing side and angle measures. So you have one more problem to do on your own. You will notice I didn't give you any directions. So the directions were to find x and to find y. 
When you come to class tomorrow, you will only receive full credit if you have this problem completed. So try your best. If you need to go back and rewatch example six or example seven, please do that. I will see you tomorrow.